Okay, I'm going to yap y'all's ear off today because your boy is coming up on an interesting time in his life. Making sure all this is square because like I'm not about to climb back down for the next 29, oh snap, the bugs, for the next 29 minutes. I got some water too because I'm finna get thirsty you're welcome for the peep show it's been a minute since I've been in the gym but ugh. Ugh. you know it's been a hot minute since I did one of these but your boy is back with a another rooftop chat and this one is interesting because I'm not one to like do celebrations and all that but as this chapter of my life starts to close I'm turning 30 um, by the time I release this I'll be turning 30 tomorrow but it's actually September 25th so I still have less like a little a little less than a month but this has been a moment where I just want to reflect on the last really nine years of my life with all these dang bugs Ugh. what I mean where do you start when you try to reflect on life I I am a sentimental person and I really enjoy taking moments to think about life think about the journey I've never really been someone who get wrapped up in the what ifs because that's a slippery slope and I don't think me for me mentally that's always good because I always forget about where I'm at now because the person who I am now probably wouldn't be who I who I would be if I would have made some decisions that I have in the past granted you know that's life that is Life is full of decisions. No big decisions, like every small decision leads to the next step. And when you collect enough decisions together, then you tend to get to where you're at. So for me to reflect on nine years, I mean, the way I started my 20s wasn't the best. <laughs> because when I was 20, I just finished my third semester in school I went to K-State and I go home to my parents house and there's this letter from the school like I mind you the semester previously I got I got a letter saying I was on academic probation I was like all right cool whatever so come after the first fall my second fall semester I got another letter saying that I was dismissed from college, or at least from my program. I was studying kinesiology and nutrition, which is hindsight pretty stupid because for one, I am not a science person. Like science has never really been my best subject, but for some reason I wanted to do that. Well, I was focusing on um, sports and stuff like that. So that's kind of where my interest got. And so I did that, but um, <laughs> that didn't end well. So yeah, I got home and had to tell my mom that I was dismissed from college. Like I, I wasn't a college student anymore at the time. So gosh, dang all these freaking bugs. Uh, I'm gonna stick it out for y'all cause this is crazy. There's so many bugs out here, but so I did that and every time I go back to my parents' house now, I remember that moment walking in the kitchen, sit and like telling my mom sitting at the table that I was dism dismissed from school. And it's the craziest, it is the craziest thing to think about. Like feeling that I failed because I couldn't do the typical 
like American experience, American dream or whatever, go to college, get a degree and all that. So it was a, a turning point for me, but sorry, I look like a crackhead. But um, yeah, I did that. But I knew I just didn't, I'm not a person that likes to go back on things. I never like to go back. So it's always a move forward. So moving back to Colorado was never an option for me. Um, but that was super interesting. Yeah, moving back to Colorado was never an option. That's my neighbor. Um, so I did some deep thinking, made some decisions, and I reached out to my counselor. I was like, yo, what's up? Like, how can I get back into school? Like, when's her interview? She was like, yo, bro, fam, I still got the email to this day. Like, I, I pull that email back up every once in a while. And I look at it and I remember what she told me was, I missed my interviews. I was like, dang, but this is what kind of shocked me because she, all the times I met with my counselor at the time, she was like very cold hearted, like not cold hearted, but like she was very all about business because she's a well-educated woman. She knows how hard the program is and all that. So she did it. She was like, yo, you missed our interview, so you're still dismissed, but you got another option, right? So if you want, the College of Art, the College of Art has their interviews next week. So if you want to reach out to them and apply to see if you can get back in through there, you can do it. So I was like, all right, here is my chance. Here is my chance to, uh, not come back to Colorado. So I did it. I, I told my mom, I was like, yo, I got to leave. So within two days, packed my car back up, drove back to Kansas and I had my interviews and I chatted and the counselor, her name was uh, Miss Julie. And Julie was super dope. Um, and she like, the coolest thing about, about that experience, she just like sat me down and was like, yo, what, what are you interested in? Like, what do you, what do you like to do? And I was like, I mean, at that time, I like doing, like, I like to draw and doodle and stuff. I wouldn't say I was an artist at that time. Like, I did it, but it wasn't anything I was, like, good at because I had other homies that were, like, amazing. So when I, stuff you're not supposed to do, when I compared myself to them, I was like, they're artists. I'm just, I'm just out here, right? So anyway, she signed me up for art classes, started taking art classes. And I was like the joy I had for all that stuff was cool. I enjoyed it a lot. And that's when I started getting A's. <laughs> I started getting A's in school, started doing well because the funny thing is art is so subjective, but at the same time, if you do a good job, people like it. So that was my start into becoming an artist was started taking intro to art then I got into oil painting oh man one thing I hated about going through art, the art department or taking art classes like we did so many still lifes and I hate drawing still lifes like I feel like that is the least creative thing me personally like Anyone who is a real, realistic painter or drawer or whatever, if that's your thing. Kudos to you. That joint is hard. But I never found that it was creative, creatively fulfilling. So when I was able to start doing things I wanted to, so I took my, got into oil painting, entered oil painting, and that's when we really started like, okay, cool. What? Because what's cool is my professor, who was my intro to art teacher, or two-dimensional art to art professor. Um, she was my oil paint. She was my oil painting professor, and that's when she was like, she told me like, she saw my style of art that I had. She's like, you know what? I'm not telling you to do this for legal reasons, but I think you would be good with graffiti. 
So, <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny that I've done graffiti in my lifetime, but I would not deny that she was right. But the hardest part with graffiti is, one, it's illegal. <laughs> so you gotta, from what I've heard, that it's illegal, so you gotta do that stuff at night. And um, it takes a lot of practice, like a lot of practice, because I don't know, anything that is sprayed out of a can, like you don't have the, the um, control that you would if it was a pencil or a pen. So that take that took a lot of time. And like I said, I will not confirm or elaborate <laughs> if I've done graffiti in my lifetime, but there may be some evidence somewhere on a hard drive <laughs> that would counteract that, but you'll never find it. <laughs> so this is about, let's say I'm 20, I'd say I'm like 21 at this time, probably like 20, 21, 22, roughly. Um, so that was crazy. That was a fun experience, but that's where we're like, my love for art actually started happening. And that's when I got into, shortly right after I finished school, I got started getting into documenting my work. And I loved it. It's the first time I like, I legit picked up a camera and like, try to do something with it and I had so much fun but that all started with not wanting to go home to Colorado and the crazy bit about that is if I didn't make that decision who know if I'd even be in I mean I probably still would have been into art because like my brother is an artist he's a graphic designer web developer and he definitely has been a big influence on me on how to brighten this up. Sorry, it's getting dark. Um, he's definitely been a big influence on me as far as how I got continued to go because we started working together and I would do started doing graphic design, making logos and stuff for people. So that was cool. And slowly that just like continued to reaffirm my love for art. And I became a, I went from becoming a washed up athlete to a creative person, an artist, starting a business. So I started making paintings and selling them to people. And I think the first time, so like, well, okay. I told you I'm just rapping, rambling. So the first thing, super cool about the art department is there's a job board that the school filtered that when people were looking for artwork, they went through the they went through the college and then they blast this email out looking for artists that can do such and such. So to be honest, I saw I got a lot of my work. I would just reply to emails, reach out to the people they were looking for. I was like, yo, I could do this, I could do that. <laughs> I remember the first thing I got paid. I try to haggle, bro. I try to get like 50 bucks just for painting a little tree on the canvas, right? Um, but first first commission paid, got paid 30 bucks to paint a tree. Cause you know those little like what people do for like um, gender reveals and baby showers. So like they do thumbprints and like make a tree out of it to give as a gift. That's what uh, this girl wanted to do. I was like, all right, bet I could do that. Cool, made a smooth 30, 30 bucks, right? Then I had another friend from my freshman orientation. She was looking for some artwork for her apartment. And she wanted like three big paintings. Like these things were probably like, <clears throat> maybe like three foot by four foot canvases. And she wanted like this, this queen theme. So I was like, bro, I'm not good at painting women at all. Like, but what I loved is she gave me my creative freedom to do it. So she was like, yo, do whatever, paint this, and then cool, let me know the price. So I was like, what? All right, bet. Well, yeah, me not knowing how expensive art supplies were. But thankfully, back home in Colorado, there was a 
uh, Michaels. So every time I went back home, I would go to Michaels and look for their, like they would have art sales. So I would, I still got a dumb amount of canvases from doing that. So I did that, bought some canvases. And the crazy thing is like, gave it to her and she still, ha like, she still has it. So that was six, seven years ago. And like every place she's moved to, she told me, yo, I still have your painting. Then she sent me a picture a while back. I was like, yo, that's nuts. <laughs> so to think that people have my work just hung up in their house, crazy. Which is something like I'm, I'm trying to get back. I'm not trying to, I'm planning to get back into this next round of nine years. Cause at the 10th year, everything changes. <laughs> so. Yeah, bro, it, it is nuts to think about what leads you to become an artist because not everybody has that traditional route. Because one thing that kind of... So at the time I was in college, I was minoring in art. And one day, one night, I was a delivery driver at Jimmy John's, so I'd work crazy hours, right? So one night I'm delivering to one of these dorms and there's this, this girl, she was an engineer um, one of these engineer students, but she, what she would do is she would like do their update boards on, in their dorm, dorm lobby. And what she would do, she would paint or she would draw stuff with dry erase marker. And I was like, yo, these things were nuts. Like straight out of like a comic book drawing. And I asked her, she was like, I asked her like, are you an art major? Like, what do you think? Are you not trying to pursue this for school? And she's like, you know what? I don't gotta be an art major to, to pursue art. I enjoy it. So funny enough, after I had that conversation and like my, my last semester of college was coming around and they were like, okay, what class do you wanna take? I was like, you know what? Actually, I don't think I'm gonna finish my minor because I had to take art history. Fam, <laughs> art history is so hard. <laughs> It's like stuff I didn't even care about, but at the same time, you gotta like know what you're doing. You gotta gotta show your appreciation for the arts. But that just wasn't that wasn't me. I'm gonna keep it a bean. That was not my stilo. I didn't really care because a lot of like I was never big into architecture. I was never really big into like certain art styles. So like learning about that stuff was kind of like counterproductive. So I dropped the classes and then I just I finished school. I got a degree in kinesiology. Mind you, I'm like 23 at the time, so. Oh, 20, yeah, 22, 23 at the time. All these dang gnats. So all that finishes. And I, uh, I could also, that's kind of my last hurrah with sports. So I thought, I used to intern for the strength and conditioning program at K-State. So I worked with volleyball, baseball, cheer, rowing, um, tennis, and a couple other sports, but I really enjoyed that. It was cool hanging out with athletes again, like kind of still being involved in that sports world. And after college, I tried to keep up with it and um, I had a job offer to be a head trainer at uh, a gym in Minnesota, but I'm like, bro, I don't know anybody in Minnesota. What the heck am I finna do? Like, I'm not even feeling training anymore. Like, that wasn't it. That wasn't it for me. So I left, turned that job down. <laughs> and then I started working at Kidoba, rolling burritos, rolling freaking burritos. I got a college degree and I'm rolling burritos, fam. <laughs> so the crazy thing about it all is sometimes you just make decisions that you got to do what's right for you. And I think the crazy thing is kind of closing that door on that chapter of being a professional athlete or being in the athletic world. It was hard because I went through like a heavy identi identity crisis because like since I was like, I don't know, five or six, I was always 
playing sports. I was always an athlete. And now I just like walked away from all that. And it took a hot minute. It took a hot minute to try to figure life out. And then some of my friends, uh, they started traveling and I went to St. Lucia in 2017. 2017, so that's the the fall after I graduated college. I went down to St. Lucia to do some volunteer work with some friends and my love for travel started. And that's when I got my first passport stamp. Like every time I travel now and I look at that first stamp, I was like, bro, this is what got it all started. To reflect on that, it's like I've been to Fifteen countries now, and like thirty some odd, thirty four states now. In the last, so I started traveling the last four or five years of my life, for real. So all of that just happened. Just just saying yes, I would say that's probably my biggest, one of my biggest um, decisions is to say yes. If it like say yes now and then you figure it out later because you never know what one decision is going to lead to but it's better to to know what happens than to figure than to know and live with regret knowing that you should have tried something before it's too late and i don't know i think for a lot of people we get so wrapped up in where our life's supposed to be. Like, granted, a lot of people I went to school with, they're all married, having kids, like multiple kids, and it's like, bro, I'm about to be 30, single, but like, do I regret my life decisions? I mean, I wish some things would have turned out differently, but at the same time, they have molded my personality to something that I think my 18 year old self would one say, bro, you're a crackhead. Like, <laughs> some of the stuff I've done, like I hitchhiked in Italy. I slept on a park bench one time. <laughs> um, like not not like midday park bench like at night i slept on a park bench and low key is basically like a hobo kind of homeless kind of situation but you know what what i would describe my 20s as is being resilient because though i've messed up plenty of times and got myself into situations that like could have been easily avoided if I put my pride aside and just did stuff, like, you know, ask for help, be more, be smarter with money and all that stuff. But at the same time, it's for the plot. <laughs> it's for the plot, bro. So I think what's nice about my twenties is just figuring it out. Cause yes, you're legally an adult at 18, but your 20s you're literally just trying to figure it out like at 18 you leave home and then you got to figure out how to make friends away from home then you got to figure out how to get a job how to find an apartment like how to be an adult and it's if you're away from your family sometimes you don't have that luxury of like people helping you out and you're just figuring it out it's your first time being an adult just like it's your parents first time being parents you know so i think that is so interesting now with hindsight because it's always beautiful hindsight's always 2020 right so looking back in my 20s and seeing where my life has gone it's like okay here are some things i would like to change some things i could probably do better i'm just adjusting um to kind of light a lighting in this just oh dang that's too bright that should be copacetic ah! 
but it's too bright. Turn off the lights. Oh man, that's another thing I gotta say. Like, man, music, music in the last decade, I think has hit its pinnacle. I wanna say like 2018, 2019 was probably like the golden era of music like the last round of it because I'm a, I'm a millennial right so being able to be able to know the old heads like Jay-Z, Nas, listen to Biggie, Tupac, Will Smith, all those cats, Eminem, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg and to see like the new ones come up like watching Kendrick, Tyler the Creator, Schoolboy Q, Drake, Kanye, like all these fools coming coming to life, right? And seeing their whole careers kind of unfold before my eyes. Some of them are still going. Like Kendrick, not like us, took over the whole summer. <laughs> like that was that's crazy. And now he's highlighting the Super Bowl. But that's just like just a, in a testament, like how long life has come to see something like that happen. And to be able to connect with artists because like a lot of times music like our parents put us onto or people who are dead now and it's just like oh having your own experience of connecting with artists when people say oh this is this is a classics like fam i remember exactly where i was when certain songs came out like when i heard um section 80 for the first time that mixtape album whatever you want to call it i was in high school i was a freshman going into my sophomore year and one of my brother's homeboys Trenton shout out Trenton because he's like a big inspiration for me to how I got into sports and like wanted to get back into sport documentary documentation but he made a highlight film for our football season my junior year of high school my junior year of high school that's what it, I mean I got those mixed up but he used a song called high power in there i was like what the heck is that and that was my introduction to kendrick lamar i was like yo this is nuts and i loved it so every time i hear high power it like takes me back but okay so i got two minutes and i promised i was going to make this video no cuts 29 minutes specifically i might do 29 minutes and 59 seconds that's probably what all my memory cards gonna allow but what i'm looking forward to in the next 10 years so I'm 39 I hope I learn from my from my experiences so I love to travel but I want to travel smarter um, I want to fully not hold myself back and follow my gut feeling a bit more than I have than I did in my 20s I say I got started late on that I would say I got late a late start on just following my intuition because I think that's what in your 20s you can get away with that you can figure life out follow what you want in a way chase your dreams and figure out what you're good at and then once I feel like once now I'm going into my 30s like I know what I'm good at so what will happen if I invest the next 10 years at something I'm good at what can only happen from that I think that's going to be great and I look forward to seeing the results. I want to make my first animated short. Uh, actually, I'm a push for that. I want to make my first animated short by end of this year. So by December, by December, I want to make my first animated short called The Slice. So keep a lookout for that. And then I want to make, I want to make a feature film. And I want to get started on my passion project of, of doing a docu-series for creatives, showing them, documenting their process of making their dream project. I think that's what I want. So as I got 20 minutes to wrap this up, tw not 20 minutes, I got 20 seconds to wrap this up. I would say if I were to talk to myself, 19 year old self, say what my 20s was like, bro, you had a ball. It's been a movie and I can't wait to see what your 30s have for you. So 